there are so many people out there that don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that that is the reason. If you think about cybercrime, the motivations for cybercrime are status, cash, ideology. Status: okay. Can I impress my criminal peers? Ideology: Have you pissed me off? Or cash: Can I profit from you? Mm -hmm. Most attacks are cash based. Sure. And because of that, they're lowest hanging fruit. So you're looking for those people that don't do anything. Are you tired of trying to keep ahead in the rat race only to have so much of your hard earned money going to the tax collector? Equity doesn't pay the bills. Retirement savings don't pay you now. And there are only 24 hours in a day to work. The only solution is passive income that pays you 24 seven now not 40 years from now. From vetted investment opportunities to tax saving strategies, let John guide you through all the confusion and take control of your financial life in pursuit of financial freedom. So sit back, relax, and welcome to the Wealth and Freedom Nexus. Welcome back. This is episode number 66 of the Wealth and Freedom Nexus podcast. I'm your host, investor, educator, and realtor, John Rickgarn. As always, be sure to hit that subscribe button or the bell icon on YouTube so you never miss an episode. And if you are a Spotify user, I uh, would love a five-star review on that platform as that all helps with the uh, background mysterious algorithms that all the tech giants have so that more people like yourself can find and benefit from this show. Now, today I have on, uh, well, quite the guest. <laughs> uh, this may actually even top the vice presidential candidates for the United States that I had back on episode 31. Uh, this guy is actually on the FBI's most wanted list. Uh, well, okay, maybe I should lead with that. He was on the FBI's most wanted list now before he became a good guy. He has been dubbed the original internet godfather and at one time was convicted of 39 felonies and was sentenced to over seven years in federal prison for a variety of crimes, uh, mainly involving cybercrime and fraud. Uh, this was, uh, well, kind of funny, not funny, but even when he got out of prison and was helping the Secret Service, uh, being a you know white hat, as they call it, kind of in the hacker industry where you're a good guy, so to speak, uh, he actually continued to commit crimes while in the offices of the Secret Service. Needless to say, he went back to prison and there was another stint as well. Uh, but now, thankfully, Brett has turned his life around and is actually a sought-out speaker on the ever-growing phenomenon of cybercrime. Uh, the speaker is actually Brett Johnson. From assisting banks with their verification procedures for like login protections to private businesses to prevent blackmail, blackmail and extortion, uh, Brett has spoken in front of thousands on how one can stay ahead of, quote, the bad guys and hopefully, uh, you know, stay ahead of them, if you will. Now, I really had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, Brett is a swell guy. Uh, we've chatted an email back and forth, uh, chatted back and forth quite a bit on Twitter. Uh, he also has a podcast himself. I highly recommend you checking that as well. Uh, the Brett Johnson Show uh, lives in Birmingham, Alabama, actually, which you know that city is uh, near and dear to me as I have rental properties there and visit every year for the annual Spartan Summit. Uh, that my friends at Spartan Invest put on. I may actually have to reach out to him when I go uh, this fall, uh, maybe meet up at Pies and Pints uh, when I'm there and maybe catch up in person, which would be kind of cool. So, uh, Brad, if you're listening to this, uh, feel free to hit me up and we'll uh, maybe we can coordinate something as the as the time approaches. Now, in today's show, I actually go over a number of steps or you know procedures, if you will, programs that I use and that what I myself do uh, just to protect my passwords, my personal information, financial logins, etc. I uh, was actually surprised. Uh, one thing I do, uh, Brett, the original internet godfather, you know, cybercrime consultant, uh, he actually doesn't do or didn't do, I should say. Uh, he actually kind of laughed about it. He said, yeah, I should probably look into that. So uh, that, I don't know, it's just, you know, none of us are perfect. It was really interesting where, you know, it gets to be one of those times where some Someone, you know, learn something from someone else. And I think we can all learn from, you know, how to protect our digital um, identity. 
uh backstory on my you know my previous career for those of you who know me personally i spent 12 years in office equipment sales uh, a lot of times when i was installing or updating uh machines if you will it was hilarious and sad at the same time where you had just like default password one two three as passwords to get into the server um they'd have a little sticky note um on their computer of what the password was to log in i mean it was just horrendously you know well sad really just the low level uh cyber steps that were put into place to protect one's environment and obviously in my job it's like well i needed that information to get on john smith's computer obviously to set up scanning set up printing update the print drivers whatever the case may be and it was very I'd say the majority of the time, it was either very easy or security was non-existent. It was very rare that I actually had to talk to someone in IT or talk to a manager or have the employee come over and they actually typed in a long and complex password to get where I needed to go. So, you know, just uh, even from my time in that short career and just what, you know, we've all heard in the news from, you know, hospitals getting uh, blackmailed. Uh, have to pay a ransom, you know, unless they unlock their computers. Years and years ago, uh, uh, right here in Minnesota, where Target is based, uh, they were hit by cyber criminals that stole, I can't remember how many millions of credit cards and debit card numbers. So, you know, obviously it's something I think everyone should take to heart and take steps to, you know, prevent cyber crime and prevent fraud as much as they can. I mean, nothing's foolproof. I mean, hell, the Department of Defense uh, has even been hacked. Uh, but I think there's definitely steps we can take to not make it as easy, so to speak. So I, like I said, I really hope you enjoy uh, today's episode. I had a lot of fun uh, recording this with Brett. Uh, probably could have talked with him for several hours, but I wanted to respect his time. Uh, might have to bring him back on to the podcast, depending on the feedback I get from this. And I certainly hope that all my listeners out there learn a few uh, tips and tricks to protect yourself and learn a little bit uh, more about Brett's life, which he'll go into a little bit more detail on the interview. Um, on a final note, I do just want to mention in the show notes for this episode, you will find a link to a promo uh, with NordVPN. Uh, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Um, I do think everyone should have this on their computers, their tablets and phones as just another tool, if you will, to safeguard their digital identity and information. Uh, this is what I use. I have tested and or used... Oh, probably 20 or 30 VPNs of somewhat, you know, some shape or form all the way back to, I think this is early 2000s, late 90s, maybe early 2000s, a company called Zone Alarm. I don't even think they're around anymore. So I've definitely tried quite a few and, um, you know, this isn't just like a, you know, hey, they're paying me to say this or anything. No, uh, NordVPN is what I've used for. Uh, about two years now, I have it on my laptop. I have my wife's computer, uh, my cell phone. I've uh, been very happy with it. Customer service has been great. Fairly affordable, too. There's, I mean, there's the free VPNs, which just bombard you with ads. And there's some of the really expensive ones where, you know, okay, if you're a government official or maybe a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, I could see going that route. But, you know, NordVPN, I think, works for 98% of those out there. So, again, I'll have that in the show notes. Uh, be sure to check it out. Like I said, uh, you know, substantial discounts. And I found it to be one of the most easiest uh, to use VPN platforms out there. Uh, with that, we will get into today's interview after a word from one of our show's sponsors. Have you ever wanted to invest like the wealthy and how the 1% do, but think it's out of reach for you? Do you desire a more abundant lifestyle, but think you can't afford it? If so, check out ECI Development. With over 20 years of international real estate experience, Mike Cobb and his team can help you truly diversify your portfolio and lifestyle. How about benefiting from a generational investment that can 10x your wealth or more with a teak hardwood parcel in Panama or Nicaragua? Maybe it'll even lead to residency options in the future. Perhaps you'd be interested in a beachfront condo for under $250,000, enjoying the beautiful sunsets off the Pacific Ocean. 
maybe an eco-friendly tiny home for around $100,000. ECI's team can even help you get financing for these investments. To learn more, check out the show notes or go to wealthandfreedomnexus.com slash ECI. Hey, Brett, thanks for coming on the show. I know this has been a long time coming. It has, and I'm I'm damn happy to be here. Thank you for bringing me in. Yeah, thanks. Sir. Pleasure's all mine. I have uh, I think I I was actually thinking back before I hit record. I want to say I first heard you on Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Radio podcast because I and I don't know how many years ago that was, but I know you know similar conversation that we're going to have today. But I know everyone always is like, "How'd you first meet? How'd you first hear about so and so?" And I really had to think. It's like I'm pretty sure it was Rich Dad Radio. So probably was. I, I love Robert. He's great. He he goes off the handle sometimes. Yeah, we, yeah, that's another <laughs> rabbit hole we won't go into. But I, I do love Robert. He's outstanding. Yeah, no. It, great influence of mine uh read all his books uh um heard him speak a year and a half ago and yeah he's definitely changed many people's lives so absolutely <laughs> All right. Well, now, Brett, for uh, maybe some of my listeners that haven't heard about you, or maybe maybe they know of a Brett Johnson, but don't know of this Brett Johnson, uh, can you just give us uh, maybe a brief overview of your life backstory, and maybe just kind of going into the crux of this podcast discussion, why you are an expert when it comes to identity theft and cybercrime? Sure. So I guess the easiest way to start is to say that the United States Secret Service referred to me as the original Internet Godfather. Now, okay. how do you yeah, how do you get that title? Thirty nine felonies because thirty eight oh just ain't enough. A place on the United you States. You get post- to 40 and get around. Well, here, actually, hey, hey, the truth of the matter is, is it was in the 70s. I pled guilty to thirty nine. Okay. That's the truth of the matter. So 39 felonies. I was on the United States most wanted list. Wow. Yeah. I escaped from prison. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I did. And if that weren't enough, I, uh, I built and ran the first organized cybercrime community. It was called Shadow Crew. It's a a precursor of today's darknet and darknet markets, laid the foundation for the way modern cybercrime channels operate today. The 39 felonies, if you want to look, you could also refer to me as basically the father of modern cybercrime. Okay. So I'm that guy. Now, usually that story, of course, that story lands one in prison. And usually the story ends there. I was very fortunate. I've been very fortunate um, my wife, my sister, and then finally the FBI, they took me in. They they gave me the opportunity to turn my life around. I took it. Mm. Uh, today, I speak across the planet. I consult with the largest companies. I've got my own podcast and, and video show. I, uh, I'm on Netflix. I'm working with mm. uh, Ridley Scott's production company on a docudrama series. Um, I'm doing all this work today. I'm also the first chief criminal officer on the planet uh, for Arcos Labs, and I'm an ambassador for AARP. So I lead a very blessed life that I've got to be honest with you, I probably don't deserve the life that I lead, but I'm damn grateful to have it. And I work hard every day to protect businesses and consumers from the type of person that I used to be. Um, you, You ask what my expertise is. My expertise is cybersecurity, cybercrime, identity theft, fraud, scams, hustles, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And That is based not only on those years of cybercrime when I ran everything and kind of invented everything, but it's also based on I began my life of crime when I was 10 years old. Uh, My mom, my mom was a fraudster, not only my mother, but everyone on that side of the family. And I grew up in that type of environment. So I'm very adept when it comes to crime. Um, Unfortunately, and fortunately, unfortunately, mm-hmm. when I was committing crime, fortunately, these days, because I'm very good about going in, talking to individuals or companies about how they may be attacked, what criminals are looking for, the cyber or the criminal mindset, um, how to protect yourself against those types of attackers. Gotcha. Interesting. Well, yeah, kudos to you for obviously becoming a, I think there's a term in the industry, you know, white hacker or one of the good guys per se versus the bad guys. And I'm sure you've helped, you know, countless businesses, individuals to, you know, protect themselves from scams and also just be more aware of scams that are out there. So uh, one thing I, uh, before we move on, you had mentioned you are on Netflix. Is that a series or movie or documentary or so? I am on Netflix, Web of Make Believe, episodes five and six. I am also on Hulu, 
Black Market Season 2, Episode 1. And we're also working on a, a docu-series about my life, and we're, do we're doing all kinds of stuff. I'm also going to be on... Um, Forbes has got a documentary that they're doing on the uh, the Bitfinex theft case, oh, and I'm sure. I'm also on that as well. Gotcha. Okay, sounds good. So now, uh, obviously, you know, we could probably go down the you know rabbit hole of every <laughs> scam that has been known to man, and you know, I'm an avid uh, watcher of American Greed of just you know the stories and you know scams that are out there. You know, one it's either you know, gosh, why didn't I think of this, you know, make 10 million and go to a non-extradition country. Right. And then on the flip side, it's like, how can someone be so stupid to fall for this? <laughs> but maybe high level, just with your background and expertise, kind of want to take this two different directions. One, sure. is there still a scam fraud out there that is maybe talked up more than it really is? And then on the other end, are or is there a scam that's perpetuating more that isn't being taken seriously enough that more people should pay attention to? So kind of like, you know, astray from the media of what they're talking about and what's reality, so to speak. And th that's that's a good question to ask. What I would say is stupidity has nothing to do with the success of a scam or a fraud. Okay. All right. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's not. It's not a, a fraudster that's relying on stupidity in order to manipulate you into giving up information, access, data, or cash. It, whether you're an individual or an organization, okay. it's how it's how a fraudster establishes trust with you. What do I need to do to get you to trust me online? That's a combination of technology, tools, social engineering. Okay. Uh, the types of scams that are out there right now. That, what's really interesting to me are the the. Um, the Nigerian scams are still widely that, successful. That just boggles my mind. They're, those were around when I was in high school when the internet was first starting. <laughs> right, and and they're still around today. And and the problem with that on the Nigerian side, law enforcement over there is horribly corrupt. Okay, horribly corrupt. So it's it's so bad that cybercrime investigations are separate from law enforcement. They do okay. not intertwine, all right, oh. and because of the corruption of law enforcement. But you, you've got this thing called the four. I think it's the four nineteen scams that references the section of law, which those scams tend to target. And okay, the reason that they're called that is in order for a fraudster to be caught and prosecuted doing that scam, they literally have to be caught doing that scam right in the mm. process of sending the letter, cashing out everything else, and it's very difficult. To catch oh. those people, add in law enforcement being corrupt at the same time, and Nigerians, the the fraudsters over there, they're <laughs> they, they are widely successful because, <laughs> well, that type of crime is more of a numbers game. It's spray and pray. You send sure. out millions of emails a day, and what you're looking for, you're looking for a target, and this is the way most scams work. You're looking for that potential victim that is in need of something. It can be money, it can be a PlayStation 5, it can be a Furby, whatever the hell that is. You're looking for a victim that wants something. And the idea for me as a scammer is to get that potential victim to not act logically or rationally. I want that victim to react emotionally. And because okay. they're wanting, they're wanting or needing something, it's easier for me to manipulate them into that. So if you think mm -hmm. about those Nigerian scams, I said it, it, it it depends on trust. And because the victim is wanting something so bad, they get an email that says, hey, I'm with the FBI. Like I got one today that says it's from Christopher Ray of the FBI and they're offering <laughs> to, I did, they're offering to deposit $2.2 .2 million into my bank account. Done, here you go. Done. <laughs> and you know, the, the language is not great or anything else like that. But for some people, that's enough to establish trust. Mm. OK, for some people, because they're wanting or needing something so bad that they start to react emotionally and not rationally. Okay. So uh, there's really no scam that that doesn't still uh, have some degree of effectiveness. Now, okay. that being said, you you did ask, are, are some of these scams overhyped? Mm -hmm. And yes, absolutely, they are. <laughs> um, you know, we've got seventy five hundred security companies out there and. A wow. lot of those, yeah, over 7,500. And a lot of them 
make money by spreading FUD, fear, uncertainty, mm-hmm. and doubt. They don't want to, they don't want to be honest and tell you that, hey, the majority of cyber criminals out there are not sophisticated. They go buy tutorials, they buy they buy off-the-shelf products and services. They don't really understand what they're doing. They're just following, you know, step-by-step procedures. Okay. They don't want to be honest about that. Instead, they say, hey, these attackers, they're hackers. They're hackers. Mm-hmm. You can't catch them. They're unstoppable. You have <laughs> to have you have to have our, our product or service. So they tend to do that. And then the media picks up on that as well. Um, So I I think that's I think that's a huge issue. If we were more honest about things, I I think that we would be much more effective in combating the types of frauds and crimes that are going on out there. When we paint these attackers or when we boost a uh, a specific type of scam or fraud, you know, way, you know, use hyperbole to do that. Mm -hmm. It's it really has an effect of causing apathy in the population and also getting the population as a whole to think that, well, there's nothing that we can do to combat these problems. And that's absolutely not true. Okay. Interesting. So now you mentioned that uh, for those of you who have not uh, checked out Brett Johnson's podcast, uh, Angler, Anglerfish, I believe it is. <laughs> I, I have the Anglerfish podcast, which Anglerfish. is now defunct. I have the Brett oh. Johnson show. Brett That's Johnson the show. One. There we go. Same logo, <laughs> different name. I was just looking at the logo. I like the fish, man. I like the fish. <laughs> yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah. And I highly recommend my listeners to check that out. I know uh, he's talked about everything. Uh, obviously, just kind of coming into more fruition now the ppp loans the uh eidl uh scams out there which right you know right wrong or indifferent politicians want to help people but it's like hey if you have no restrictions on it it's just kind of a target for scams. It is. so it, yeah and no security means that you're going to be yeah, alive yeah exactly so now uh you know i just kind of want to talk high level so uh you know, I myself am very much into, you know, I call it the three layers, uh, health, wealth, and stealth, you know, nice. having a healthy base for your financial plan, uh, growing your wealth, whether that's real estate or business or whatever, but then also stealth. And now I kind of allude to LLCs, trust, uh, asset protection, but I also kind of look at it, you know, in my personal life as well. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of give a quick rundown, you know, I myself, uh, I have a Proton Mail account, but I still use Gmail. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, I use Norton. I have Malware Bytes, the paid version. I use okay. NordVPN as a VPN server for all my laptops and mobile devices. Sure. I have LifeLock for myself, my wife, and even my son, who at the time of this recording turns 14 months next uh, week. There you uh, go. Dashlane Manager. I use uh, Brave Internet Browser. And I actually have two backup solutions for if there's ever a, you know, my computer you know, ghost toast gets hacked, whatever the case may be. So high level, uh, would you say, you know, would you recommend any of those uh, solutions? Do you think that's a good mix? Am I fairly well protected or is this kind of like a come to Jesus? It's like, John, you're, uh, you've been scammed. Uh, I think I can see, uh, you know, you got Swiss cheese uh, holes uh, or holes in your protection plan. (laughs) Well, John, I I would never say something like that. All right. (laughs) But what I would say is that, that you're, there are so many people out there that don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, that is the reason. And if you think about cybercrime, the motivations for cybercrime are status, cash, ideology, status. Can I impress my criminal peers? Ideology. Have you pissed me off or cash? Can I profit from you? Mm. Most attacks are cash based. Sure. And because of that, they're lowest hanging fruit. So you're looking for those people that don't do anything. You've done a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I like what you've got going on there. Um, you know, with me, I use, I've, I've got a credit freeze in place. I monitor accounts, place alerts. I've got multi-factor where it's, where it's, where, uh, where it's available. I also use um, Google and Microsoft Authenticator. Um, oh, sure. I've got, I use the Chrome password manager because I'm a cheapo. Okay. Um, so, but I mean, you're doing a, a lot of good stuff. I like, I don't use a privacy browser and I should, okay. I like that you use brave. I, I should use that. Um, I don't know why I don't, I've just not gotten around to it yet, but sure. you, know, you probably convinced me to do that today. I had, <laughs> I had a friend that we were talking about TikTok cause I, I was, yeah. I was a big TikTok fan and I know that it's a security issue. I yeah. know that. 
but I still love the damn videos. I know. Um, yeah, I, I struggle with that. I actually have my same <laughs> W Freedom Nexus. I do have a handle. I am registered on TikTok. Uh, I need a five-year-old <laughs> to explain TikTok to me first. Exactly. But uh, I wanted to use that to grow my business. But yeah, with the whole CCP interaction, yeah. I... I don't know. I'm kind of torn just like you are. <laughs> I am. I, I've not been on TikTok in several weeks now, thankfully. But, uh, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of fantastic stuff there. And I, I would say that people need to follow that lead just to do something. Now, there's mm -hmm. there's a whole set of stuff that you need to do. But, uh, you know, you've got LifeLock. And uh, I like I used to hate LifeLock. I really yeah, do. Interesting. Uh, well, the reason I didn't like them is because when Todd Davis was in charge over there, he was busy putting his social security number on a, hey, on yeah. a van. And, and then he driving. actually did get hacked anyway. So. <laughs> and I'll tell you the truth behind that. The truth is, is that while he was saying, hey, tr try to hit me, you can't you can't yeah. defraud me. He had four fraud analysts handling the, the hits that he was getting at that oh. point in time. That's the truth of the matter. Uh, since I think it's Norton that took them on, since yep, Norton correct. has taken them on, uh, LifeLock has become outstanding. They okay. really have. Um, if you, I would tell anyone that lists that listens, hey, use LifeLock. Uh, try to find a, a free service to begin with. See if that's enough to uh, to satisfy your needs. Okay, right, I, I'm a believer in taking a, a proactive response to your security. Know what's going on with your accounts. Don't just mm -hmm. rely on a tool that's out there because that's one of the things that you see with companies or individuals is you'll get a security tool and you think that all your problems are solved that you don't <laughs> yep. have to pay attention. And that's absolutely not true. This show is brought to you today by Lightbulb Podcasting. Are you a busy professional that needs to get more time back in their schedule? If you are a podcaster like me, you have enough on your plate. Why not outsource your podcast production? From editing, show notes, keywords, scheduling, volume balancing and editing, and creating audiograms, podcast production is another job in and of itself. That's why I use Lightball Podcasting. Get phenomenal support and an affordable price while you concentrate on growing your brand. Go to www.lightballpodcasting.com today to schedule an introductory call. Put your content in the spotlight. Exactly. So uh, you're you're doing a lot of good stuff. I you know for the people who are listening out there, look into a privacy browser. Absolutely do that. Absolutely okay. use a password manager. Malware Malware Bytes is outstanding. Use that. Also, uh, I like the instead of Norton antivirus, I just use the Windows antivirus. I think that's oh, okay. Great. Um, so have those solutions in place as well, but, uh, proton mail, I like proton mail. I use proton mail myself, but I also use Gmail. Yeah. So yeah I think we're all guilty of it. We too. are all <laughs> guilty of that. Um, you know, with me, it's, it's just understanding that there are predators out there and having that situational awareness and mm -hmm. doing something, doing something makes you much more protected than 80% of the population that's out there. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, interest, kind of when you mentioned like that, just do something. Uh, my previous career, I spent 12 years in uh, copier sales. So a lot of times I was setting up, you know, you know, scan the email, scan the file folder. And if I had $100 for everyone that said, oh, I have a little sticky note that has my password right there, I'd be a multimillionaire and I wouldn't have to work. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, to give you an idea how bad that was, when Shadow Crew got busted, some of the people who got arrested had their passwords on sticky oh, notes. <laughs> that's kind of yeah. ironic. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the bad guys and the good guys. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, one thing I did want to touch about uh, on Brett, and I know you mentioned this on your podcast, you just alluded to now. I have heard this before too i myself have not used this mm -hmm. but you have mentioned you know you know whether it's life lock or some monitoring that kind of keeps you apprised of hey wait there's a fraudulent charge from ebay that i don't recognize or whatever the case sure and that's more for accounts that you have right. whereas a credit freeze kind of puts a hard stop for a fraudster to open up you know a bank account a credit card take out loans whatever in your right. name now I have heard, and Grant, this is a couple of years ago, that credit freeze, like it's easy to do, but it's not as easy to unfreeze, especially when you legitimately need to, you know, refinance a mortgage or get a loan. Like you legitimately need to unfreeze it. Right. Um, is that true or has things changed over the last few years? So, and I, I'm a big advocate of computer freeze, uh, of credit freezes. Um, okay. Credit, free, credit freezes became free September 18th, 2018. And okay. you should place a credit freeze on every single person in the house, including children. 
children are the number one number mm-hmm. one victims of ID theft. Twenty five percent of all kids will be victims of ID theft. Wow. Uh, a credit freeze, as you just pointed out, it stops all new account fraud. Works great for children, not so much for adults. Now, here's the thing. Mm. To do a credit freeze, you have to contact all three credit bureaus. All gotcha. three credit bureaus are going to try to get you to pay for some sort of monitoring service. Ah. That's a fact. And they're going to not only do that, they're going to try to hide where you go to freeze the credit if you go online. All right. Okay. So it's a problem to do that. But you do need to freeze all all three credit bureaus. Okay. Now, what you just alluded to about it being difficult to rent to um, to lift that freeze in order for a company to come in and pull your credit report. During the pandemic, absolutely true. Absolutely okay. true. Because you had you had much the the employees were much lower. You had the pandemic offices were shut down, everything else. So it was very difficult at that point in time. Okay. We're past the pandemic now, so it's not very difficult to do that. Uh, okay. You can you can do it online. You can pick up the phone, call as well. Um, it needs to be done. Okay. All right. Uh, now the problem with the credit freeze is that only twelve percent of the population, even though it's free today. Mm. Been free since 2018, only 12% of the population has one in place. And the people who do have a credit freeze in place, they tend to think, as I just pointed out a minute ago, they tend to think that it's that it's a a fix all for everything. And it's not. Right. It's just a tool. It stops all new account fraud. It doesn't it doesn't protect your existing credit cards or bank accounts or tax records or anything else like that. So you need to monitor and place alerts as well. Mm -hmm. Um Regardless of whether it's difficult or not to raise to uh, to unfreeze the credit, it's still something that you need to do. Okay, um, because everyone today, everyone's information is available. Everyone yep. doesn't matter who you are. Last year alone, we had two thousand five hundred and seventy just Jeez. reported breaches. Just reported. Uh, wow. Of that, of that fifty-seven billion records compromised just last year. Everyone's information is available, wow. so you need to accept that and then understand that since your information is available, what do you need to do to make sure a criminal can't use it if they get it? And a credit freeze is one of those things that you need to do. Okay, so so maybe even just as a kind of like you said, do something and kind of build onto that. I'm yeah. sure the fraudsters, you know, go after the long like you said, the low hanging fruit where, well, gee, John, he's got all this protection. He's got a credit freeze. He's got this, uh, Oh, this Brett Johnson, he uses the same password for everything. That's it. No credit freeze. (laughs) And he never looks at his bank statements. I think I'm going to target him. (laughs) That's it. It, It's, it's paying attention and doing something, Mm -hmm. you know, freeze your credit, monitor accounts, place alerts, use a password manager. That's the trifecta right there. From there, you can add on multi-factor authentication. You can add on all this other stuff. But the big ones are those three. Do that, and you're more protected than 80% of the population worldwide. Okay. Okay? Interesting. All right. Well, thanks for uh, yeah mentioning that. And I might have to take a look at that as well. And probably, <laughs> probably will, uh, based on, uh, probably yeah. will. Of course, I hear that a lot. Yeah, you know, I hear people I say, with the privacy browser, I'm going to do a credit freeze. That's right. Help each other out. So. <laughs> but now, uh, we are, uh, at the time of this recording, and I'm not sure exactly when this is going to publish at this point, but we are approaching, uh, three years post COVID. Obviously, you've talked, uh, you know, pretty lengthy of the, you know, the PPP loans and frauds, the EIDLs, and I know a lot of the other, you know, targets of fraudsters out there as well. Uh, with that and coming into 2023, do you foresee any new scams or continuing scams that uh, listeners should be aware of? So what we're seeing right now is um, we're, we're seeing an explosion of the numbers of criminals online. Uh, when Shadow Crew was busted in 2004, we ended with 4,000 members. 2017, Alpha Bay is the largest criminal group. It gets shut down 240,000 members. Wow. 2019, just a dark web marketplace gets shut down. 1.15 million members. All that pre-pandemic. Uh, during the pandemic, as you astutely pointed out, you had stimulus programs in place with no security in place mm-hmm. for at least six months. Yeah. Those numbers exploded at that point in time. So now you've got millions of fraudsters out there that are looking to make money. At the same time... You're seeing cybercrime vendors because you have marketplaces that sell products and services to right. the criminals that use them. 
So you see these cybercrime vendors that are developing products and services that target the unsophisticated criminals that are out there, which are the 98% of cyber criminals that are out there. Okay. So we're seeing uh, we're seeing phishing as a service where, you know, a lot of people used to advise that you would look at a phishing page and, you know, the syntax would be wrong, the wording yeah. would be wrong. It's no longer like that because it's populating from the actual bank page or what have you. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing phishing as a service. You're seeing these things called uh, reverse proxy attacks. So you go to sign into your bank account and you have multi-factor authentication. Well, the attack sits right in the middle of that and it captures the cookie from that session so that when you sign in, you leave, I've got the cookie, I, ins I inject the cookie into my browser, I don't have to worry mm. about your credentials, I bypass multi-factor authentication, I come in and I, I control the account at that point in time. These are the types of attacks that are out there. We're seeing more and more automated types of attacks, we're seeing more uh, products and services that are geared toward ease of use. Okay. Uh, we're seeing a movement away from simply stealing the passwords and concentrated now on stealing the cookies from those sessions because then you don't need the passwords. You bypass any type of multi-factor authentication, things like that. That's the movement that we see on, on yeah. one end of the spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum, you see things that like refund fraud that's hitting um, every single merchant and retailer on the planet. And it's it's yeah. a very simple scam. You simply order an item, you claim you didn't get it in, you claim it wasn't in the retail box, or you say that, hey, I want a refund, and you can manipulate mm. the return label to make it look like you've sent the item back, but you oh, not. <laughs> yeah. So um, what you see is you see that, that crime is becoming much, much easier to be successful at. And that that's a huge issue when you consider on the good guy side of things that they're not sharing and exchanging information. Law enforcement numbers to combat online crime, they're extremely low. Mm. Um, you've got jurisdictional problems. Security, a lot of security companies operate solely for profit. So they're more interested in making money than they are in stopping the crime that's out there. Yeah. All that rolled in together, it, it really pretends a very... Uh, bleak future right now but i'm hopeful okay. that we get to the point where we're able to uh to effectively combat these problems agreed so a lot of it too and i've i've been a big proponent of you know self-sufficiency and independence where you know we yes the government can help yes lifelock norton etc can help right. you out but at the end of the day you know it's really on us and no one's going to care more than us as well it's your account it's yep. your accounts it's mm -hmm. not lifelocks it's not uh any other security provider those are your accounts no one should care more about your account than you and the criminal that's trying to break into it right so make sure that you take that proactive response make sure that you know what's going on with your security and your accounts Okay, interesting. So now as I uh, in I know this is kind of a blanket statement, but um, you had just mentioned, uh, you know, capturing those cookie information, mm -hmm. and I myself didn't know really about that as you know, I don't want to paint a broad brush per se, but with this uh, new, you know, capturing that cookie information that diverts the whole multi-factor authentication stuff, is there are there any tools that people can use to deter that, so to speak? For for people, usually not, okay. um, especially. So the problem with that is, have you fallen for a phishing scheme? Typically, all right. Okay. Um, and there are there are things you can do if you're if you're looking about practicing good cybersecurity hygiene. Understand the some of these statistics. Like forty one percent of every single router on the planet has the default password. So are <laughs> have you changed have you changed your passwords? I have, yes. Okay. So maybe <laughs> so your financial institution hasn't. So <laughs> all right, but wow. but yeah, maybe your bank hasn't. But most so 41% oh. of every router has that problem. That's a, that's an issue. Um it's it's about having that situational awareness of doing the things that you need to do. Change the passwords. Just don't have the default password. Use a password manager so that you have different passwords, secure passwords, mm -hmm. on different websites. Typically, that threat landscape that criminals thrive upon is developed because we are not doing the things that we need to do. Okay. So if you're if you're taking care of those issues, you're going to be much more protected than most everyone else on the planet. Gotcha. Okay. Now uh, you kind of allude to it, like even myself, you know, having all the tools at play but if there's you know 
I'm just throwing out names, you know, Bank of America. Obviously, we had the Target hack years ago and, you know, based here in Minneapolis or Minnesota. Um, is there anything as, uh, I want to say, as consumers that can help encourage or force businesses to take this seriously versus, oh, we're just focused on the bottom line? No, absolutely there is. There's, uh, you know, you vote with your pocketbook. Okay. You really do. So if you've got a company and, you know, I've complained about Facebook in the past, I've complained about some merchants. <laughs> well, and it's meta like now. That. It's not Facebook. It's meta now. <laughs> and they're going bankrupt, betting everything on VR. So um, that stock's down 73%. Now. Yeah, I, I sold Facebook a lot of, back in 2018. I never looked back and a lot of people thought yeah. I was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you were not stupid. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, the bank stocks were down to the ah uh, stocks. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, you know, the thing is, is that... Um, if a company is not doing everything that they can to protect you, whether that be a merchant, a retailer, a government organization, security company, whatever, you have the ability to not engage with that, okay. that organization. So I would say not to do that. I would also say that, you know, we've got some companies out there that are very that are very free with privacy. They <laughs> yeah. don't they don't know what privacy is. And it's important to be complaining to your representative about that so that okay. something can be done. Um, you know, just just don't sit and take it. You know, so many people on this planet, they sit and just don't speak out, don't raise their voices or say when something is wrong. And I'm a firm believer that if you've got something to say, say it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And if people don't, you know, speak up or if it isn't brought up, it, nothing's going to change either. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So. Because, because I'm going to tell you the other side, they are going to speak up. Mm -hmm. And if, if they're the people that are doing wrong, you, it's up to you to voice that. Yeah. All right. And, you know, when people don't respect your privacy, when they uh, aren't protecting your data online, anything else like that, it's it's they're not going to speak up because they're profiting by that. Yeah. So it's up to you to raise your voice for that. Yeah. Very, very good words. So. All right. Well, again, I want to thank you, Brett, for uh, coming on the show and appreciate your time and glad we could uh, finally make this work. Absolutely. Now, if, uh, you know, obviously the cyber crime identity theft is a very broad in-depth subject but if any of my listeners out there have either you know taken a couple nuggets of gosh maybe i shouldn't use password one two three for all my accounts or whatever the case may be <laughs> or they're just maybe learn want to learn more of how they could protect themselves better online uh what's the best way to reach out to you your resources and etc Sure. So you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. Just look up Brett Johnson. I'll pop up there. You can visit my website, www.anglerfish, A-N-G-L-E-R-P as in Paul, H-I-S-H dot com, anglerfish dot com. I've got the Brett Johnson Show. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple iTunes. We're all over the place. We're coming back to YouTube in the next three to four nice. weeks. Nice. <laughs> so so we, we're there. Uh, here's the thing. If as an individual, if you've got a problem, you may have to chase me down. Okay. But I don't I don't charge individuals at all. I'm I'm busy, so I sometimes you have to send me several emails to get up with me. But uh, I will do everything that I can to advise you and help you and protect you from you know the, these type of people that I used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so feel free to reach out. I'll be more than happy to help you if you've uh, if you need some consulting services or anything like that. Hey, I can help you out with that. So just let me know. I'll do everything I can to help protect you or your organization. Perfect. Sounds good. I appreciate that. And uh, for those uh, listening or you know watching this on YouTube or whatever, I'll have these uh, links in the show notes as well. So you don't have to hit record. And it was like, was that a P? Was that a F? Was that a whatever? <laughs> I'm guessing the fish is a play off of the uh, fishing scheme, just like uh, That's it. Frosters have done. So <laughs> That's it. All right. Sounds good. Well, I uh, appreciate your time, Brett. Uh, this has actually uh, been a really interesting show and I've learned uh, quite a few things as well. Uh, when I'm down in Birmingham uh, next year for the Spartan Summit, we might have to catch up at pies and pints or something let's let's get that in and hey you are outstanding thank you so much for bringing me on i appreciate it you bet thanks a lot brad take care take care thank you for listening be sure to share rate review and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform for more updates check out www.wealthandfreedomnexus.com remember Nothing on this show should be considered tax, legal, investment, or professional advice. This show is produced solely for educational and informational purposes. Please consult an appropriate and licensed tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for specific advice for your situation. For distribution or publication rights or media interviews, please contact the host.